Hello my friends! This is a video I'm really excited to make because it ties into something I've talked about well over a year ago. In this video, I want to tackle some dialogue we got from Eris this season and try to explain to you who I believe is the Deathless One, the wielder of the Eternal Sword, and why I believe there is only one candidate for the title. With all that being said, let's get into it. line of dialogue in question can be found at the end of the Altars of Summoning activity. When you complete all of the tiers necessary to get a reward, Eris will come in and give you the chest, while also spouting a line of dialogue. Here is the specific one I'm talking about. Okay, you've heard it. The point of this video is very simple. I have a good guess as to who this character is, and I'm going to provide my explanation why. This is my statement. I believe that there is no other character that this can be, other than the Winnower. So I'm not going to beat around the bush or drag things on for longer than they need to be. But now that I've said this, I need to tell you why I think this is the case. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's begin by breaking down the possible candidates and why I'm instantly disqualifying them. The most common suggestion that I have received is that this character is the Guardian, meaning you and me. And I'm just gonna show you my take on that. You died on a battlefield long before my time. And he died doing what he does best, defending the last city of humanity. Because the rival will help us, he is gone. Yeah, I don't believe at all that she's referring to us. We are not deathless. We die a lot, and yeah, I, I do that quite a bit, unfortunately, too. And even taking our deaths as guardians out of it, saying they don't count, we came from somebody who did originally die. Also, why would she hail us? We are her acolytes. She's our hive god. No way that she's talking about us in that manner. I mean, let's be honest. We are great and all, but sadly I do not believe we qualify for this specific praise. Well, what about Zivu Arath? She follows the sword logic and potentially has a sword. Eris is trying to kill Zivu. There's no way that she's hailing her like that. Besides, all the Hive Gods, Oryx included, they're not deathless. In the Books of Sorrow, the three siblings killed each other again and again and again, and this season, Savathun mentions that. So no, even if for some reason Eris had a reason to talk about Zivu like this, she doesn't qualify as Deathless either. But what, the Witness? <laughs> no! The Witness came from people who died, and also doesn't follow the sword logic, and doesn't seem to have a sword either, from what I can see. Okay, fine. Eris has a relationship with the Queen of the Awoken. Could it be Mara? Nope. Mara has died. Like, twice. Oryx, already mentioned, died several times, and we did finish him off for good, and we took his sword too. The list goes on. You give me a name, and I'll give you a reason why it ain't them. So yeah, these are a couple of suggested names for who could be this character, and this is my reasoning as to why it can't be them. And as for the Eternal Sword part, I do believe there are two meanings behind it. One is that the Eternal Sword represents the sword logic in its purest form, forever strong, forever uncompromising, and always destroying weak life. You need to prove your right to exist. And it is literally called the sword logic, okay? I don't think I have to waffle too much about this part for you to get what I'm trying to say. The other possible explanation is that this is a reference to an actual sword that a character has. So with, with that in mind, I'm going to give you some possibilities. The Deathless One, the wielder of the Eternal Sword, is either 1. A Deathless character who wields the sword logic in an extremely pure way. 2. It's a Deathless character 
who wields a weapon that is referred to as the Eternal Sword. And three, a deathless character who follows the sword logic in its purest form and who also has what is known as the Eternal Sword. Now, I'm going with option number three, and I'm going with the Winnower. You see, the Winnower made the sword logic. The Winnower follows the sword logic better than anyone else. Do you want to know why? Because under the sword logic, everyone will eventually become weak and therefore die. The Winnower is that guy who will never become weak or die. In a sense, the Winnower is the sword logic and the sword logic's final shape. I explained it in my podcast that I did last week that there is no one definition for what a final shape is because technically anybody can have their own version of it. So I like to call this version the majestic final shape. So the Winnower is deathless and the Winnower follows the sword logic better than anyone else. Okay, cool. Uh, but what about the sword? Is there any chance of there being like an actual sword associated with the Winnower? Well, I made a video about this ages ago. Yeah, if this is right, then we got another theory in the bag. Let's go. In that video, I talked about how pyramid architecture in the Moon Pyramid and Europa, and after I made that video, I found more in the Witch Queen architecture. They have swords engraved into them. Even in the Nine architecture, you have a sword here, here, and here. No, I'm not saying that the Nine are associated with the Winnower at all, because their architecture has a different purpose. The architecture of the Nine is part of prophesying the future and showing us hints of what will come. That's basically what the whole point of prophecy was. When you compare the swords from the Pyramid architecture, also and the one here from the Nine architecture, to this sword in concept art, you do see an uncanny resemblance. And this, in my opinion, is what the Eternal Sword is referring to. After all, it is said that the Winnower created the first knife. Now, I'm going to pause things there and address one question I'm sure some of you have. Well, the Winnower is referred to as the Formless One, so why are you saying that the Winnower has a sword? Listen, I would love nothing more than to have a character called the Winnower striding around whacking fools with a big sword. I'd love it. But at the same time, it doesn't have to be a physical sword. The Winnower is effectively the god of the sword logic and the hive. And when you look at how any religious figure or saint or deity is depicted in art or architecture, a lot of times they will be associated with an equally religious object of importance. It doesn't necessarily mean that that person actually walked around with that object. It's again about the depiction. And like I said, the eternal sword can also be referring to the sword logic in its purest form. And so you would have the Winnower, the god, with the eternal sword, which is basically the representation of the sword logic in its purest form. That's how I'm interpreting it anyway. Imagine that these were like a bunch of crosses, and now you get what I'm trying to say. But why would the Hive know anything about an eternal sword or deathless one? Take, take the pyramids and the nine out of it. Patrol. Because the Hive's knowledge that is where Eris is presumably getting this from. Well, the Hive did know about the Deep. Not the Winnower as a character personally, like Oryx did, but they know about the Entity. And they know that it's not the Witness. And remember, the Worm Gods serve the Deep, not the Witness. And that's why the Witness had to send Rolk to force them into following its plan to create the Hive. In item descriptions during the Taken King, Hive lore mentions a character called the Formless One. Again, that is most likely the Deep or the Winnower. And as for the sword, there's not much to go off of, but I did have a theory. A mystery that many have forgotten about is lore that came in the April update of Destiny 1, so post Taken King but pre Rise of Iron. And in this lore, there was a Taken being tortured by the Awoken, and it says one line that has never been explained. Blessed is the Nashtoreth. Some people think this was an early reference to Nazarek. Some people think it was random nonsense. But I always wondered if it was a reference to this sword. Is this what the Hive call it in their language? And so I went digging, and the only thing I could find was that in the Hindi and Marathi languages, Nashtar or Nastara, 
means a lancet, which is a surgical knife. And if you want to get really wishy-washy about it, you can find some correlation between a surgical knife and the sword logic. I want to be clear. I'm not saying that the Nashtoreth is like 100% the winnower sword. And I'm not saying that those words I mentioned are relevant at all. I made that video at a time where I just shared whatever I found because it was fun. And at a time when making these videos were a lot less stressful, let's just put it like that. But that's a question that came up. And so that was the best I could do in answering it. So long story short. I believe that the Deathless One is the winner, simply because when we look at all the other characters, there's nobody else who fits the description. And even if you think the sword part is a bit of a stretch, it doesn't matter. Because like I said, wielding the Eternal Sword can simply be a reference to how pure that character is in their following of the sword logic. And even if you take the Eternal Sword out entirely, there is no character who can truly be called the Deathless One. So final point, why would Eris be hailing the Winnower? Well, when in high form, Beehive. Beehive. <laughs> Eris has admitted that she is using the sword logic. She is following it in order to beat Zivu at her own game. And part of the sword logic, the Hive's version, is worshipping the Deep. It's like if the cultists on Earth didn't know who Nazarek was, but through nightmares ended up worshipping something called the Final God of Pain or the Darkest Hour. And anyway, those are my thoughts on that. Like I said in recent videos, I don't believe we'll be seeing the Winnower in the final shape. Rather, I believe he will be the villain we face in a few years' time. I see this line as simply another stone to be added to the pile of evidence Bungie has given us over the years. But yeah, this is just something I wanted to share with you guys. What do you think? Do you think I'm onto something? Or do you have an explanation that makes way more sense? Let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video finding it either entertaining or informative. The winner might wield the eternal sword, but I, I wield the wombo combo. <laughs> uh, anyway, I hope you all have a great week, and I'll talk to you all real soon. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.